Well, hello there again, my little fairies. It's Yaya here with another episode of Storytime with Yaya and Papa Moon. Today, we're going to be reading out of book two, The Never Girls, The Space In Between. But before we get started, I thought to show you my bookmark. This right here is a picture of a famous painting. The name of the painting is called The Starry Night or A Starry Night by Van Gogh, who was a famous painter a long, long time ago. I like how he swirls everything. I'm gonna get the picture close. How he swirls all the colors. I got to see some of Van Gogh's paintings once uh, in a museum. And when you stood in front of the museum, you could almost see the light coming through the painting. It was pretty awesome. Hopefully one day you'll get to see paintings by Van Gogh as well. All right, so here we go. So this is book two. So let me just give you a little synopsis of what's been going on. Neverland. Far away from the world we know, on the distant seas of dreams, lies an island called Neverland. It is a place full of magic where mermaids sing, fairies play, and children never grow up. Adventures happen every day and anything is possible. There are two ways to reach Neverland. One is to find, your, find the island yourself. The other is for it to find you. Finding Neverland on your own takes a lot of luck and a pinch of fairy dust. Even then, you will only find the island if it wants to be found. Every once in a while, Neverland drifts very close to our world. So close, a fairy's laugh slips through. And every once in an even longer while, Neverland opens its doors to a special few. Believing in magic and fairies from the bottom of your heart can make the extraordinary happen. If you suddenly hear tiny bells or feel a sea breeze where there is no sea, pay careful attention. Neverland may be close by. You could find yourself there in a blink of an eye. One day, four special girls came to Neverland in just this way, and this is their story. All right, book two, chapter one. <clears throat> Lainty Winters was, Lainey Winters was soaring. For a brief moment, her heart seemed to stop. The ground fell away and she rose up, up, up and over the fallen log. An instant later, she touched down again, bounding through the forest on the back of a doe. Trees flashed by in a blur of green. Lainey dug her hands deeper into the doe's fur. She held on tight as they darted around bushes and flew over stones. Leaves crashed above. Lainey looked up and a squirrel saw a squirrel racing through the trees. A tiny fairy sat on its back, her long brown braid swinging behind her. The squirrel leaped from branch to branch, keeping pace with the doe. Lainey leaned forward, urging her doe on. The fairy did the same. Ahead was a small clearing. In its center stood a tall maple tree, bigger than any other tree in the forest. From a distance, its branches seemed to sparkle and move. This was due to the many fairies who hummed around it like bees around a honeycomb. The maple was called the home tree and it was the heart of Pixie Hollow, the Never Fairy's world. Lainey steered the door toward the home tree without even looking up. She could sense the fairy and the squirrel following above. A few feet from the tree, the squirrel shot past Lainey. It landed on a branch and came to just a stop as Lainey and the doe pulled up at the home tree's roots. Lainey laughed. You beat me again, Fawn, she called to the fairy and the squirrel. I wouldn't be much of an animal talent fairy if I couldn't win a race against a clumsy, would I? Fawn replied. Smiling, Lainey slid off the doe's back, pushing the big glasses she wore up her nose. She didn't care about winning or losing. For her, the joy was in riding the deer, feeling it turn when she wanted to turn, knowing when it would leap. In her real life, the one where she went to school and lived with her parents, Lainey had never even had a pet, not so much as a goldfish. But here in Neverland, she played hide and seek with wild hares. She listened to the songs of the loons, and she cradled baby hedgehogs in her hands, things she never dreamed possible to happen every day. As Lainey patted the deer's back, Fawn flew and landed on its head. She whispered something in the doe's ear. The doe ducked its head at once as if nodding. Then it turned and bounded away. What did you say? Lainey asked. I told her next time I'd ride her and you could ride the squirrel, Fawn joked. I want to learn to do that, Lainey said. Fawn raised her eyebrows. Ride a squirrel? Don't you think you're a bit big? Lainey giggled. No, I want to learn how to speak to deer. You have to wriggle before you can hop, Fawn replied. I have to do what? asked Lainey, confused. It's an animal fairy saying, Fawn explained. It means you have to start slowly. Talking to deer is tricky. They can be pretty snooty about accents. Let's hear how your mouse is coming. <clears throat> Furring her brow, Lainey squeaked. <clears throat> 
doesn't sound like a mouth, does it? <clears throat> Can you make a better mouse noise? I hope so. Fawn had been teaching Lainey how to speak the language of mice. So far, Lainey had only learned one squeak. Loosely translated, it meant, are your whiskers well? Two dairy mice that were sniffing around nearby lifted their heads to look at Lainey. Not bad, said Fawn, nodding. Now let's hear you call the chickadee. She pointed to a plump little bird sitting on a branch. But I don't know any chickadee, Lainey protested. It's easy, said Fawn. Just go like this. Purse your lips, her lips. Fawn laid out a whistle that sounded like... <whistles> now you try. Can you whistle? <whistles> That's all I can do. I don't whistle very well. Lainey did her best to copy Fawn. She pursed her lips and whistled, but all that came out was a sad... <whistles> to her surprise, the chickadee flew over and landed on her finger. How did I do that? Lainey asked. Then she noticed Fawn laughing. Wait a second. You called him over, didn't you? So what if I did? Fawn said with an impish grin. He wouldn't have come if he didn't want to. Animals like you, Lainey. I'd say you're becoming a real animal talent clumsy. Lainey blushed. Fawn pulled a sunflower seed from her pocket. She held it out to the chickadee, who took it in its beak and flew away. Well, I'm hungry, Fawn said. Want to see what the baking talent fairies have whipped up today? Lainey looked shook her head. I'm going to find the other girls first. See you later? Sure, said Fawn. I think there's a nest of robin's eggs that need a hand with hatching. Maybe you can help me. With a wave, she flew off. Lainey started across the meadow, her spirits high. Fawn's compliment still ringing in her ears. A real animal talent clumsy. Lainey could help smiling every time she thought about it. Maybe it's true, Lainey thought. Maybe I really do have a talent with animals. Before coming to Pixie Hollow, Lainey had never felt particularly special. She wasn't beautiful like her friend Mia or brave like her friend Kate. She wasn't good at sports and she didn't get the best grades in school. In fact, Lainey had been sure she wasn't good at anything at all. But that had changed when she started spending time with the animal talent fairies. Lainey was learning how to listen to animals and how to watch them. And she had a knack for it. A real animal talent clumsy. A rustling noise above her made Lainey look up. She paused to watch a flock of flamingos pass. She loved seeing the pale pink birds against the brilliant blue of the sky. The flamingos had been one of the very first creatures she'd seen in Neverland, and she never got tired of watching them. Lainey continued across the meadow and made her way to Havendosh Stream. There she found Kate, Mia, and Gabby, her friends who had come to Neverland with her. They were sailing little boats with water talent fairies. Tiny fairies in red, gold, and green leaf boats drifted around on the current while the girls blew wind into their sails. <clears throat> The freckled, curly-haired fairy named Prilla was there, too. Prilla was the reason the girls had come to Neverland. She had a talent unlike any of the other in Pixie Hollow. She could travel to the world of humans and back again just by blinking. One day, she traveled to Mia and Gabby's backyard and accidentally brought the four girls back to Pixie Hollow with her. Prilla had discovered that she couldn't blink the girls back home, so the fairies of Pixie Hollow had taken them in. That had been days ago, or was it weeks? Lainey wasn't sure. Time passed strangely in Neverland, where every day was sunny and no one ever grew up or grew old. Hi, Lainey, Mia said. We're having, where have you been? I was riding in the woods with fun, Lainey said. Kate stood brushing off the knees of her jeans. We're thinking about going to Skull Rock, <clears throat> just to see what it's like, she told Lainey. Kate had made her mission to explore every corner of Neverland. Prilla says we might see a mermaid there, Gabby chimed in excitedly. Gabby was only five, but she was every bit as adventurous as the other girls. We're not going for long, Mia added. There's a fairy dance tonight, and I want to make sure we're back in time. The weaving talent fairies are going to braid jasmine into my hair. Want to come? Kate asked Lainey. Lainey hesitated. She wanted to go with her friends, but she also wanted to watch the chicks hatching with fun. There were so many fun things happening in Neverland, sometimes it was hard to decide what to do first. Just then, they spotted a fairy flying toward them. As she came closer, the girls saw it was Sky. The fairy's rose petal cap was crooked on her head, and she seemed to be out of breath. I've been looking all over for you girls, she gasped. It's time! Time for what, said Kate. Neverland is on the move again, she replied. The girls looked at each other in dismay. They knew what that meant. It was time for them to go home. Oh, that was a good chapter. Okay, guys, hope you have a good day. Love you so much. Mwah.